So today, we're gonna to get a little bit more serious. Why? Because today's artwork is no fun and games. Uh, I'm still planning on having something really beautiful at the end, but we're telling a serious story. So today is not just about the artwork, but also about the narrative. And also, for the first time on this channel, I'm working on canvas. Okay, so we're talking about rich and poor, where the urban fringe inevitably encounters an area where rich and affluent areas border onto poverty-stricken areas. And while this is by no means a new narrative, it's not even a new narrative for the art world, uh, but there is an element of it that I've always felt is missing. It's one that I want to try and add in into this artwork. I think there's a uniqueness here, um, having spent time in uh, townships, there's something about it that I want to tell that I've never seen before. Okay, so I'm gonna have one side uh, with shacks cascading their way up. And on this side, I'm gonna have a beautiful, very affluent looking side. Then we're gonna join them, but you'll see how in a moment. Okay, so the one element that is not very well represented is that of the fun side and the beautiful side of townships. And there's something about the, the way they operate in terms of the sense of community that you just don't get in affluent areas. There's something about relying on each other to the extent that being neighborly is perhaps not just important, but critical to you all sort of sticking together. This is something that is lost in affluent areas. Shizenyama Brai, yeah? And for those of you who don't know what a Shizenyama is, Shizenyama is a place that you go and you, it's kind of like a, think of it somewhat as a restaurant, not in the sense that you might know it. This is a, a restaurant where somebody lights all these barbecue fires. You come and you buy your meat from them, but you go and cook it yourself on one of these open fires. And it's a hell of a festive place to be. They kind of, because of the, the constraints of the, the living conditions, because the, the homes are so tiny and so cramped inside, so you know there's not space to entertain inside your home. So these sorts of things kind of spill out into the streets in such a beautiful way. You know the music isn't happening inside somebody's home; it's happening on the street. And whether you're invited to the party or not, you're a part of it because just walking by, you're going to hear it. And I think it's that that I want to try and bring across in this: is that it's there's a beautiful side, not to poverty, but to the way that people that are in poverty deal with it and how their circumstances draw them close together. And it's not to take away from the hardships of it. By no means is that my intention. But for once, not to purely focus on that and also to rather see some of the beauty of the people and the environment that they create despite the hardships that they're encountering on a daily basis. So this here is something you'll see a lot of. It's called a robot. So for those of you who aren't from South Africa, there's something else I need to um, just fill you in on. Our traffic lights are referred to as robots. Don't know why, just always has been, uh, at least for as long as I've been alive. Obviously you've got red, orange, green, and the robot here that's hanging is peppers. So you have red, orange, and green peppers, and that's why they call it a robot. Now I need to add one of my favorite animals, the chicken. Chickens are often sold live uh, to prevent the need for refrigeration. Sorry, chicken. Anybody who's immigrated, I immigrated once from South Africa to England, and uh, have since come back. And you know, a lot of people say, well, you, you're mental to come back. But unless you've left, 
you wouldn't understand what it means to leave. The other thing about the township is the vibe is not, it's, it's derived and created rather than derived, it's created by the people who live there. Despite the circumstances, once again, they don't have, they have way more fun, I would say, than affluent areas who are often worrying about other things. Now we're going to the Lani side of the street. Lani and Lonely is what I'm gonna call it. Just doesn't vibe the same. I think people just in all areas need to be as neighborly as possible. I think getting to know your neighbors and people in your community is fun. And it's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about this channel is because I really want to engage and I really want to get to know the people who are part of my community. And I want to lose my sketchy style to see me getting quite analytical here. We don't have to completely lose that for the Lani's. I ain't changing for no one. Okay, let's do windows first. So there's that. So that's all I'm doing on that side. Very deliberately, I want sort of the dynamic, almost chaos and density to be very evident on the one side and the very sort of stark contrast of a very beautiful, very somewhat sanitized home on the other. Right, so here comes the crux of it all. The thing that we just can't get away from and it's the one thing that inevitably uh, links these two sides. And what that is, is no matter who you are, we've all got dirty laundry. Okay, so I've finished all the line work for both sides. I'm really, really happy with how it's turning out. Uh, it's starting to tell the story that I wanted to tell. Color is going to be an enormous role in this. Because I'm working on canvas, I have to use fixative so that e the markers don't smudge. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna jump into the color, which is really going to make this narrative and this artwork come alive. <laughs> Right, so when we left off, our line work was done and we thought that that was a good time to take a break. So I took a break and unfortunately during my break, I had a break. I had a couple of breaks. It was my ribs. So yesterday I had a motocross accident and I have broken a couple of ribs, but that's not going to stop this pain from happening. Right, so it's time to mix up some paint and get really colorful with this one. Okay, one more. Okay, so these are gonna be nice and messy. Lots of texture. There's an essence of the township that is nearly impossible to describe. There's a beauty to it and there's a vibrancy that unless you've experienced it, you, you wouldn't really understand it. And I don't fully understand it, but I've got an essence of it from time spent. It's not a lot of time. It's not as much time as I'd like, but a good friend of mine, he uh, grew up there and I used to go there with him from time to time. I got a glimpse of it and a little inkling of, of what this is like. I only then sort of begun to understand why anybody would choose to stay there despite their economic and financial circumstances. Okay, so for the most part, buildings are done on both sides. Uh, so now I'm going to do a wash over the sky just so I've got something to really pop the washing off of. But it's gonna be something quite subtle. I don't want the sky to take center stage here. This is about the dirty laundry. While there is some serious message in this, 
it's not really the, the focus is more on how no matter your, what your circumstances are we are fundamentally all the same and uh, you should celebrate that and both sides have things that they can teach the other and also just have more fun. Uh, it's just detailing now. Right, so I finished the piece and really it's come out way nicer than I had even hoped and I knew it was going to be a great piece. There's a lot of personal sort of link here for me, stories from my own time spent with my friend in the township. This one's going to stay in the house or the studio for a while. I'm going to have to paint something else to get attached to before I can release this for sale. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you did, here's some more videos that I think you'll love. <laughs>